speed with the screen test today. So it's going to be four, three, two, one. We are live. All right. Good morning, everybody. Where's everybody watching from this morning? Where's everybody at? Good morning. Where is everybody watching from this morning? Did you guys see the last video I posted? Ooh, it was vicious. It was a vicious audit. Good morning, everybody. Where is everybody watching from this morning? Type right down there in the comment section where you're watching from. Today is all about the history of the United States of America. Got the posters in stock today. Ooh, big posters in. Big posters in stock today. Where are you guys at? Where is everybody watching from this morning? Did you guys tune in to learn something this morning? Today we're going to learn something we did not know yesterday. Something we did not know yesterday. Good morning everybody. Where's everybody watching from? Where are you guys watching from this morning? Good morning everybody. Where is everybody watching from today? Just type right down there. New Zealand. How's it going over there? What's going on? How are the, how, how are the um, Lovid uh, uh, Zandates? Because like, you can't say it actually. Where are you guys watching from? Oh, do me a favor. If you would do me a favor, just tap on the screen. Just tap on that screen for me. Good morning, New Orleans. Got the posters in. I got the posters in. I got the, I got the posters in for a Christmas sale this morning. Good morning, Michigan. How you doing, everybody? How's everybody? And as you guys know, this is the unedited history of the United States of America. We are talking about the unedited history of the United States of America. Is it your first time here? Is it your second time here? Is it, is, oh, is that what you can say, 1984? As you can see, the name of my channel is 1984. Thank you so much for the likes, I appreciate that. We're gonna get to 10,000 likes and I'm gonna teach a lesson today. Today's lesson is gonna go into deep detail about understanding the civil rights movement. We're gonna talk this morning about the civil rights movement in great detail and exactly what the role of Martin Luther King Jr. was and why his assassination led to Terry versus Ohio. As you know, I teach that Terry v. Ohio right there is the linchpin of the prison system of the death system. You see Terry versus Ohio is right here and then right there. Where are you guys watching from? Where is everybody watching from? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Good morning. We're gonna to learn today about Martin Luther King Jr. and how his assassination directly tied. Thank you, how many times have you guys been here? How many times have you guys been here? Thank you guys for coming by, I appreciate it. Let's learn some history today. Let's really get into the history. I did a vicious audit last night of the Border Patrol. I couldn't believe they stopped me for no reason and wanted me to show them my papers. I said, you can forget it. I'm not giving you my papers. I'm not answering any questions. Where are you guys from? Where is everybody? You know, just do me a favor and just tap on that screen for me. Thank you so much, I do appreciate it. Got the posters in stock. I got the posters in stock. I got three versions of poster. I got a $20 version, I got a $99 version, and I got a laminated expensive $135 version of posters in stock now. Just got these posters in stock. They're sitting at Image Square Printing. Thank you guys so much for coming by. I do appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Where is everybody watching from this morning? Where's everybody watching from this morning? So we're gonna talk this morning about Martin Luther King Jr. Let's get a thousand people in this room real quick and let's really set it off. Let's really set off this room this morning. You guys make sure you tap on that screen as fast as you can like you're running on a 1980s video game. Just tap, 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 tap on that screen. A little tap, tap, tappy. A little tap, tap, tappy. Who doesn't like a little tap, tap, tappy? I love a little tap, tap, tappy. Don't you love it? A little tap, tap, tappy makes you happy. <laughs> Where are you guys watching from? Where is everybody watching from? I'm gonna teach you guys some things you, did know, you didn't know yesterday. As you know, the name of my channel is Delete Laws with a Z. Delete laws with a Z.com. That's also my YouTube channel. I have a ton of information on that YouTube channel. You got to go to deletelaws.com with a Z. These are my coffee funds right here. Cup of coffee fund here. Cup of coffee fund here. Cup of coffee fund right here. Take a screenshot if you're interested. I do appreciate your support. Now, the reason why we made this into a galaxy poster, you see how it's a galaxy, is so the kids would be interested and they'd want to learn about the St. Parish Massacre. So they would want to learn about the Colfax Massacre. Because if we do not teach history to the children, we are doomed to repeat it. We are doomed to repeat history if we do not teach the kids the history of the United States of America. And across the top, as you can see, it says the unedited history of the United States of America. You see the poster says it's the unedited version of the United States of America. If you're new in the room, drop in where you guys are watching from. Drop in where you guys are watching from. Let me know where you're watching from. Is it your first time here? Is it your second time here? Is it your third time here? How many times have you been here? Is it your first, second, third? Is it your 10th time here? Just tell me how many times 
you've been in this room and you've learned some history right here. Already at a couple thousand likes, we're gonna get to 10,000 and then I'm gonna go into a deep dissertation today. I'm gonna go into a deep lecture today about Martin Luther King Jr. and how his assassination directly ties to Terry v. Ohio and the 1968 Omnibus Crime Bill. Have you guys ever heard of the 1968 Omnibus Crime Bill? Has nine times, gee many crickets, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you so much for coming by, I really appreciate that. Let me ask you guys a question. Oh, my checkpoint video, man, I, I, was, I was vicious, huh? I was vicious. I don't, put up with tyr I don't put up with tyranny in America. I do not put up with tyranny in America. I don't do it. I don't do it, I don't have it, I can't stand it. So does anybody know how Martin Luther King Jr. ties directly to Terry versus Ohio? Does anybody know that information? This is the civil rights poster that I have available. And the reason why it looks like this is because I made it for children. I made this for kids. I made it for kids so that kids would come up and be like, oh, who are these characters? Who are all these faces on here? Why is there a black face on there? What does that mean? Who's Frederick O. Douglass? Who, who's Frederick Douglass? Who is that? Who is that? And wh who's that guy right there? And why does he matter? Is that Marbury? That's Marbury and Marbury versus Madison, which is right there. Why is Marbury such an important figure? Good morning, everybody. I do have three versions of poster available. I have a, I have a $20 version, a $99 version, and a $135 version on my website now. So if you're thinking about Christmas for your friends, you think about Christmas for your kids, please go by the website, Delete Laws with a Z. Please go by the website, Delete Laws with a Z. 125 people, let's get to 1,000. Let's get to 1,000. 125 people in the room, Delete Laws with a Z. So it's Delete Laws, you just add a Z. These are my cup of coffee funds right down there. As soon as you guys learn something, you may be so inclined. But if you're not, that's okay too. That's okay too, as long as you learn something. As long as you learn something today and you take it away. So now we start off here and we're just gonna go over a couple of things that are figuratively, that are super important that you have to understand. We have a Bill of Rights, and it's a Bill of Rights. We are entitled to certain freedoms in this country, and we don't have to ask permission for our freedoms. You shouldn't have to sign up for a registry to have your Second Amendment right. You don't have to go ask permission for the government to pray. You don't have to ask the government to get together with your group of people and pray. You do not have to ask for permission. You are a free person. You are a free American. You were born free. You are free. You're a beautiful person. This Bill of Rights is yours. This is what allows you to be free. You understand? This is what allows you to be free. This right here. Now these rights are given to you by who? By the government? No, by God. It's the Supremacy Clause. These rights are given to you by God. You have the rights here given to you by God. And if you didn't know that, now you know. It's the first time you ever heard it. There you go. You're welcome to it. And so I, I always want to focus on the kids. I always want to focus on the kids. All of these particular characters through history are put on here so that the kids will go, who are these people? Who are these people? Who are these people and why does it matter? Who are these people and why does it matter? You guys, if it's your first time here, drop down in here where you guys are watching from. Drop right down in here where you guys are watching from. Just type down in here where you're watching from. So I know, are there any Americans in the room? Are there any Canadians in the room? Just type it right here. Where are you guys at? Where are you guys at? And is it your first time, second time, third time? Are we at 10,000 likes yet? 3,500 likes when we get to 10,000 likes. I'm gonna give a lecture today about Martin Luther King Jr. and why his assassination, why his assassination ties directly to Terry versus Ohio. If you haven't, for Texas is in the house, Kansas is in the house, Fort Worth, a couple, man, a lot of Texans in here this morning. American in the house. God bless you, sir. God bless the United States of America. We will fight for this country. We will fight for our rights and we will not back down. We will not back down, okay? We will not back down. I got all posters in now. Holy smokes, can you believe it? I got the $20 version, I got the $99 version, and I got the $135 version in stock. Man, are you kidding me? And there are Image Square Printing in Santa Monica, California. They are ready to ship. You can go to deletelaws.com with a Z. Go to deletelaws.com. We're, we're gonna do a fundraiser every day, every time we can stay on live for more than five minutes. We gotta do a fundraiser to keep, keep it coming in. Deletelawswithaz.com, go to my website. That's also my YouTube page. Make sure you put a Z, a Patriot's in the house. God bless you, sir, I'm a Patriot myself. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a classic, liberal, conservative patriot. <laughs> I am a classic, liberal, conservative patriot. Oh, my friend, I would stop saying the message. Why would I ever stop, dude? Why would I ever stop? We have to fight for America. We have to fight for our freedom. I do appreciate you coming in the room. God bless you, sir, but we have to fight for our rights. We have to fight for freedom. You have to be willing to fight for the freedoms that we enjoy. 
3,800 likes, you guys gotta tap on that screen for me. You have to tap, tap, tap on that screen or what will happen is this room will start to die down because of how TikTok is. If you don't tap on the screen while you're watching, it's so weird, it's such a weird app, but you gotta just tap on the screen like you're do, 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 Forgive me, I'm sorry. I woke up at five o'clock this morning and I've been going strong ever since and I have not stopped. I woke up at 5 a.m. and I have not stopped. Let's get to 10,000 likes and then we're gonna talk about, we're gonna talk about Martin Luther King Jr. And if you haven't heard of the 1968 Omnibus Crime Bill, well, the 1968 Omnibus Crime Bill was specifically created for people of color. Did you know that? Did you know that? Yes, they are, yes, they are. Yes, they are trying to stop the message. They sure are, you know why? Because they don't want anybody to lead. Nobody wants to be led. They, they want someone else to be the leader. Deletelaws.com with the Z. You guys get this digital poster. I have it down at 20 bucks. It's cheap, it is cheap, really, really. You can download it and then take it to FedEx office or you can just order one for me. The $99 version is indestructible. You cannot tear the paper. It's like one of those FedEx paper envelopes but it's just on nicer paper and you can get it on my website, Delete Laws. It is incredible. It really is incredible. 6,000 likes, we're almost to 6,000 likes. At 10,000, this lecture begins. You see the number up here? We're at 6,000 likes, tap, tap, tappy, tap, tap, tappy. When we get to 10,000, we're gonna begin this lecture and I'm gonna go into great detail. I'm gonna go into serious, serious detail. So let's talk a little bit about the lecture that's coming up here so that we can have a good time so that you guys can learn something as, as, I'm, as I'm building up a little bit of an audience here. <clears throat> Thank you so much, I do appreciate that. I don't consider myself a white savior at all. I consider myself a constitutionalist and a man who's fighting for freedom and liberty. That's what I consider myself to be. I consider myself a man who has dedicated his life to overturning Terry versus Ohio. Because as you can see, as the gentleman was so sweetly, so rude, came in here, decided to call me a white savior, which is ridiculous. Look at Terry versus Ohio right here, and then look at the prison line. Take a look at that. Do you think I did that? Am I responsible for that? Do you think I wanna be here teaching this? Nope, I don't. I would rather be on the beach in Hawaii. I would rather be enjoying my day. Oh man, lots of empty faces in here. I hope, ugh. How sad, lots of just empty squares. If you guys are so inclined, you guys should always put a picture up. You guys should always put a picture up. You should always put a picture up. Always, always, always. You really should. Because then that tells me that you're actually a human being and you're not a troll. Because I have lots and lots of trolls. I have lots and lots of trolls. It's crazy. It really is crazy how many trolls I have. Thank you moderators, I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much, I appreciate you guys. Good morning and God bless everybody. Thank you for coming in this morning. Look at Terry versus Ohio and then look at the prison system. You tell me what happened. Could it be Terry versus Ohio? Is that what it could be? Could it be Terry versus Ohio? Could it be? Is that possible? I mean, I'm just saying. Is, is it a possibility that Terry had a major effect on locking people in a dungeon? Do you think that did? Do you think maybe that had something to do with it? I'm just guessing. I mean, from my studies of 20 years of studying history, I never wanted to be a white savior. I never wanted, I didn't do this for black people. I did this because I was no-knock rated by the police in 2002 and I started studying the law. And then when I came out in June of 2019, 2021, I started to realize that other people didn't know the same things I know. I didn't know that. I thought everybody knew this shit. I thought everybody knew this stuff. Where are we at? We are at 84, 80, 88, 8,600 likes. We're so close to 10,000. We are so close to 10,000. You guys go by my website, Delete Laws. Go check out the posters. I got three posters available now. I got them in stock. I got, I got them in stock. I got three posters in stock. The digital version, the indestructible paper version, and I got the laminated $135 version. It should be $155, but I said, no thank you, no thank you. I'm gonna charge as little as I possibly can so that people can buy as, you know, a poster or an ebook and they can teach their kids. They can teach their kids. <clears throat> I'm sure the sound keeps going in and out. I'm sure of it. All kinds of weird things happen with my account, as you know. All kinds of weird things happen with my account. I do appreciate it. Can you hear me now? Am I clear? Am I clear? Can you guys hear me now? Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear me now? Oh, I'm not racist at all, my friend. Why would you say things like that? Have you watched any of the content I produce? Aren't you the racist white savior, dude? Is that what you just said? Have you watched any of my content, brother? Have you watched any of the content I produce? Or do you just come in here and say like wacky shit, like just for no reason? Just so weird. Like if you actually watch my content, you'll find out that that, uh, that, that, astro that, that prognosis of me is absolute garbage. It really is. It's total garbage. It really is. It's not true at all. But if you guys go by deletelaws.com, you can get a copy of my poster. Great, so we're at 10,000. Let's begin. 
Let's begin the lecture. Hopefully uh, the trolls don't come in here and get my account shut down. If they do, I will go over to another account and I will turn it on. <clears throat> so now I did an audit yesterday. If you guys saw the audit, it was pretty vicious. So in 19, on April 4th of 1968, Martin Luther King Jr. is assassinated. And this is in 68. Now this is at the after a lot of people have been assassinated who have been fighting for civil rights, for civil liberties. And so then on April 4th of 68, when he gets assassinated, the very next day, Lyndon Johnson has a meeting at the White House with the Chief Justice of the United States, a man named Earl Warren. Now Earl Warren, what he did is he colluded with a guy named Franklin Delano Roosevelt in 1942 to lock up 100,000 Japanese people. Now that case went to the Supreme Court under Korematsu versus the United States in 1944. However, at that time, Franklin Delano Roosevelt had appointed seven of the nine Supreme Court personnel. Supreme Court personnel, okay? And so then what happens in 1942, the Stone Court says that, oh no, there's not a violation of your civil liberties. And so Korematsu, even though he'd spent a year in a, in a prison for no reason, for no reason, right? Then uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt uh, was absolved of any kind of constitutional crime of any kind of constitutional crime. You know, there's a lot of pages you can go to, my brother. Lots of pages you can go to. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Now, I didn't make this poster for trolls. I didn't make this poster for people who are full of hatred. They want to call me stupid names because they don't actually listen to anything that I teach. I made this poster for kids. I made the poster for children. I designed this poster for kids. That's why I animated all of the icons of history through here. I animated everything so that kids would want I want you to teach the kids history. That's why I made it like this. That's why it looks so cool and so funky. So that children will sit down in front of it and you can go over each one of these figureheads and you can talk about each one of them. That's the reason why I'm here. If we don't educate the children, we are doomed. Our, our future is absolutely doomed. You understand that? If you guys could please get a, get, a, get a profile picture, that would be amazing. I would really appreciate that. You gotta get a profile picture. Go by deletelaws.com. Go by deletelaws.com with the Z. I got an ebook. I have an ebook and I have uh, um, uh, three different kinds of posters. And by the way, I give this away for free. I've given away 150 digital posters this week. I've given away 150 digital posters this week. And I want you to teach it to kids. This is the unedited history of the United States of America. This is the unedited, not some bullshit William Archibald done in history, the real history. <clears throat> the real history of America. So now if we come over here and we take a look at the laminated version, it's a little bit, the colors are a little bit better because I had this done at Image Square Printing. Now you're gonna get a little ref reflection because of the lighting, but I wanna talk a little bit about Martin Luther King Jr. So not only did, we, did the, the, the US Supreme Court pass Terry versus Ohio the day after Lyndon Johnson colluded with Earl Warren at the White House. Now remember, this is the Chief Executive of the United States in 1968, and this is the Chief Justice of the United States of America. Do you see what I'm saying? And so now I, I have a, a, eight, a 12 part video on the Rittenhouse trial. It's on my other account, Chile DeCastro 19, uh, Chile De, uh, it's on this account, I think. So now when Lyndon Johnson colludes with Earl Warren, what happens here is disgusting. They conjure up a way for the police to be able to run over and grab who? Run over and grab black people. Now this is sad because my family has been here since the Revolutionary War and if you can't tell, I'm half Irish German and half Colombian. My, my fingers and hands are white. So it's not something that, 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 that I can take credit for because I never would have been a part of that and my family was poor. So we were not elitist. We had nothing to do with the disgusting things that happened through the 60s. Matter of fact, my mom was 18 years old and she was the, the only white woman at a Black Panther rally. Yeah, she got pictures. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. I'll share it one day. I will share. Isn't it amazing that my mom went to a Black Panther rally and then I ended up being a civil rights activist? Isn't that crazy? I mean, isn't that just crazy? So now a lot of people know about Terry v. Ohio because I've just been putting the message out for months and months and months. And Terry v. Ohio is the linchpin of the prison system, the linchpin of the death system so that you can go to a dungeon and be locked away based on a cop being suspicious of you. Did you know that? So what's the, what's the Fourth Amendment standard? The Fourth Amendment is that no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation. So when you break that down, no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause. So a warrant can be issued if you break the law. Now the Supreme Court, 
This unelected body of, of, of predominantly white supremacy, it's pretty sad to say that, but it's true. The Supreme Court has, has been a white supremacist court since the very beginning. It's really, really sad. Where are you guys from? Where's everybody from if the room turned over? Top down here, where you guys are from? Where are you guys from? And then tap on your screen. Where are you guys watching from this this morning? Where are you guys watching at? Everybody type in here where you're watching from, if you would, please. If you would, please. Holidays are coming up. <clears throat> So <clears throat> holidays are coming up. That's why I'm out, I'm out here this morning. I, I'm taking the chance. My account can get suspended for no reason. You guys will be watching in the middle of my talk here and my account can be suspended for absolutely no reason. It's crazy. It is crazy. It really is crazy. It is absolutely nutty. So now the 1968 Omnibus Crime Bill, that's gonna come in October of 68. Now Terry v. Ohio comes June 10th of 1968. But what does the Omnibus Crime Bill do? This is the first real legislated gun control where you are not allowed to have a gun or what do they call it? A sentence enhancement. Albuquerque, New Mexico in the house. Albuquerque, New Mexico in the house. Thanks so much for your support and coming by you guys. I do appreciate it. If you want to get a copy of my poster, please go to deletelaws.com. I have a $20 version, a $99 version, and a $135 version. That's on Delete Laws with a Z. Make sure you put the Z on the end. It's not Delete Laws with an S. It is Delete Laws with a Z.com. Delete Laws with a Z. These are my cup of coffee funds right here. Take a, take a screenshot if you would. Please take a screenshot. These are my cup of coffee funds right here. If you are so inclined to want to buy me a cup of coffee for anything you learn, Appreciate that, thanks a lot. And this is my cup of coffee fund right here. Thanks a lot, I appreciate your support. And so <clears throat> I'm gonna back up over here onto the bigger chart because I wanna give you guys a bigger perspective as I pull back over here. So we got Terry the Passes and then right next to it we got the Omnibus Crime Bill. So what does these two things combined do, right? What they do is they make it so that if a cop is reasonably suspicious of you, he can run up and grab you. And then if you have self-protection on you, which would be a gun of any kind, well, then you're going to go to the dungeon. And why is that? How come they have that? Albuquerque, good morning. How are you, Texas? Good to see you. They, they, so what this does, the combination of Terry plus the omnibus crime bill, what that actually does is it strips away your Second Amendment right to have self-protection. And why do they want to strip away the rights for self-protection? Well, because they don't want you to have to be able to protect yourself. Because as you know, there is a lynching graph on this chart right here. And why is that? because the federal government has, been, has worked in collusion with the Supreme Court since the very beginning. Since the very beginning. You're not free in the United States of America because an unelected Supreme Court. Because of an unelected Supreme Court. It's absolutely incredible. We are dealing with absolute tyranny in our country. And so, you know, I, I made this for, for adults so you guys could learn some stuff, but I really, 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 I really, really made this for children. I made this for kids so that kids would learn this information because we are older, so we are jaded. We don't think we can change the world, but the children still see this as a way to change the world. The kids don't, they don't buckle. When they see adversity, they don't care. They push forward. They push forward. And so we create this dungeon system. And when, do, when is the dungeon system created? When, when do you think this system of locking up mass incarceration, when do you think it begins? Does anybody know the answer to that? When does the incarceration system begin. Yeah, they lie to you in school. They don't teach you anything true. It's called William Archibald Dunnan. William Archibald Dunnan. He partnered with the Sisters of the Confederacy to create an edited version of history. That's why the channel that I teach is extraordinarily popular because I teach the unedited history of the United States. The unedited. Um, because I have trolls like crazy. You have no idea. I have so many trolls, it's absolutely incredible. I'm actually shocked I've been able to be on this long. I'm really shocked. I really am. My account gets suspended within about 15 minutes. <coughs> so <clears throat> the prison industrial complex is built in 1920. 1920 is the beginning of prohibition. Prohibition begins in 1920, 1920 to 1933. And this is the first time that we, we create a, a prison industrial system where we create a system of mass incarceration. Because as you can see, the prison system down here is just 40,000 people in 1920. But then when a mandate is passed, the, the prison system quadruples in just 13 years. And then from 1930 to 1940, it doubles again from here to here. Like you can't see that, but each one of these little tiny thin lines is 100,000 human beings living in a dungeon being put in a dungeon for no reason, for no reason at all. 
And so, I mean, what's the point? Is, did it work out? Is the alcohol problem any better? Is the drug problem any better? Not at all. It's worse. And who brings the alcohol and drugs into the prison? The guards do. The guards do it. They're the ones who bring in the alcohol and drugs. And so right here, the prison quadruples here. And then in 1930, which is about right here, to right here to 1940, the prison industry doubles again. It doubles again. And then right here, when Richard Nixon in 1971 declares war on drugs, then the prison industry takes off like a rocket because cops can grab you based on their suspicion from Terry versus Ohio. And then if you have a, even a marijuana joint on you, you're going to go to prison for 10 years. For 10 years. Okay? For 10 full years. That's all right. It's all about money. And so then, as you know, and I talk about this all the time, you know, I, I go on and on and on about it. Ronald Reagan, everybody talks about how great Ronald Reagan was. To me, Ronald Reagan's in the bottom five presidents. He's absolutely the worst. Because look at the spike in the prison industry right here. And who's going to prison mostly right here? People of color. Sadly. Sadly. I'm not some great white savior. I did this because I was no-knock rated by the cops. I just know the statistics of prison. And so right here, the prison, look at the prison industry. I mean, like, look, Nixon gets it so the prison industry does, does this. Reagan gets it so it does this. Biden gets it so it does this from the 94 crime bill. You see? And so now who's the leadership in America? Who's the leadership? Who is it? Who is it? Nobody. Left or right. Center? Anybody? Nixon is a Republican. Reagan's a Republican. Then you got George Bush. You got Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton, is he a leader? Uh, Joe Biden, how's he doing? He wants to pass another mandate. Joe Biden wants to pass another mandate. Here's how well the mandate went last time. There's how well the mandate went last time. That's how well it went right there in 1920. And so now we're at 2020 and history is about to repeat itself. And the prison industry that tapered off, you know why it tapered off? Not because of Barack Obama. Not because of Barack Obama. Not at all. He's the biggest disappointment of my political life. I'm so disappointed that I voted for him in 2008. I did not vote for him in 2009. I did not vote for him in 2009. Yeah, here's the 94 crime bill right here. It's on the poster and that you can teach the kids the 94 crime bill. It creates the cops program, community oriented policing services, which just mints new cops every day. And it has Operation Relentless Pursuit in it, which combines all the federal agencies into one to attack your cities and towns, to attack your cities and towns. That's what it's for. That's what it's for. I campaigned for Obama. I voted for Obama. And then very quickly, I hoped he would be impeached. And he was not. He droned to death a million people. DeleteLaws.com with the Z. I have three levels of posters now and they're all in stock. They're at Image Square Printing. They're at Image Square Printing. Pure lies. What am I lying about, brother? What am I lying about? Oh, the Punisher is in here. The, the Punisher has come in to tell me that I'm telling pure lies. Am I telling pure lies? Am I telling pure lies? Is that what's happening? Am I lying? Or am I telling the truth and people don't want to hear it? That's the truth. DeleteLaws.com with the Z. Get my poster. Get my digital ebook. Get my digital ebook if you would. Go buy DeleteLaws.com with a Z. With a Z. I did. I'm a conservative liberal. I'm a, lib I'm a classic liberal. I wouldn't vote for Obama again. I did in 2008. I was really hoping that he was going to do some good stuff. And then he didn't. And also, by the way, I was going to vote for Trump. But then Trump pulled some shit with that capital stuff and I'm like, oh man, I can't support this guy. I can't support him. Just, and, and I wanted to. I wanted to have change. And now I'm looking at Tulsi Gabbard. It, tap your screen if you know who Tulsi Gabbard is. Tap your screen if you know who Tulsi Gabbard is. Have you guys watched Tulsi Gabbard's Instagram? Oh my God. Tap your screen. Listen to what Tulsi Gabbard is saying. Tap on your screen. Tulsi Gabbard is spitting some truth right now and she left the Democrat Party. Do you know that? She left the Democrat Party. Listen to Tulsi Gabbard. Go to her Instagram and listen to her message of dissolving the Patriot Act. Oh my God. Yeah, I was going to vote for Trump the second time, but then he did the insurrection shit and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, man. I'm for our country, man. I'm for our country. I'm for America. I'm for liberty and freedom. I'm for the United States. My, my grandfather, this is the flag that was draped across my grandfather's funeral, across his casket. This right here, this is the same flag that was on my grandfather's casket. My great grandfather served in World War II. My, my grandfather served in World War I. My uncle Larry fought in Vietnam and won the Purple Heart. So I am all about America. I am all about America. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure, man, trust me, I know. And TikTok is not my friend. TikTok is not my friend. They have ruled against me on appeal after appeal after appeal. That's what's going on. That's what's going on. That's what we're dealing with. 
We're dealing with, the, with social media companies that are colluding with big technology. We are dealing with social media companies. You know, and so when we talk about the Fourth Amendment, what is your right? It's the right to be secure in your person, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures, and that shall not be violated. Okay. Oh man, personal responsibility? I don't know. He earned a Purple Heart. Thank you for correcting me. I appreciate that. He, he, he earned a Purple Heart. You're exactly correct, Sam. Thank you so much for pointing out the flaw in my language. I am not perfect. I'm going to make mistakes when you speak. When you talk to thousands and thousands of people, you're going to make mistakes when you speak. It's not my fault. I'm not a perfect person. I am, in, I am flawed. Okay? Okay? Yeah, that was, that was me at the checkpoint. I do not put up with tyranny. I do not and I will not put up with tyranny. I do not put up with having to show my papers we are not in Nazi Germany. I will not put up with it. I cannot tolerate it. It makes me sick. It makes me sick. Oh yeah? Well, wh who's the leadership then? Uh, I, I, I wanted to vote for someone that's going to change the game. I did not vote for Trump. I have not voted Republican or Democrat since 2008. I have not voted for Republican or Democrat since, since 2008. So tell me where the leadership is because this is what I care the most about. This prison line right here is what I care the most about because my dad was locked away in a prison for 20 years for drugs and it did no good. What good did it do? And all of these people have been legally departed from our country, legally killed and the police go home. Jacob Blake is still alive by the way. But all these people have been killed by the police and let me ask you, who's, who's better? Republicans or Democrats? I can't vote for either one. And I will not vote for either one. I have not voted for a Republican or a Democrat since 2008. Have you? Because if you have, you're adding to the duopoly. We absolutely have to fight the duopoly with all that we are. Because the prison system, from Joe Biden to Bill Clinton to Ronald Reagan to Richard Nixon to Donald Trump, all of them, and these are the attorney generals. I'm not sure if you guys know that. These are the attorney generals who have made damn sure the 2005 case of the Gonzalez versus Morrison. There's Gonzalez right there. He was the attorney general under uh, George Bush. And Gonzalez versus Reich criminalized marijuana. That we had a chance to decriminalize marijuana in 2005. And this guy here, Gonzalez, that's Gonzalez, who was the uh, uh, state attorney general, he fought this woman named Reich because she was growing homegrown marijuana for her own symptoms, right? Okay, and so the attorney general for George, George W. Bush took her to court, took her to court, and the Gonzalez versus Reich case. And then Scalia, who had voted against using the Commerce Clause in Lopez, he had voted against using the Commerce Clause in Morrison, he then in 2005 decided to support the Commerce Clause. What a joke. What a joke. Okay? Hey, listen, I, listen, I'm not going to get involved in the politics, guys. I'm sorry I said anybody's name as far as politics go because I didn't vote for Biden and I didn't vote for Trump. I didn't vote for Obama the second time. I'm, I don't vote for these people in the duopoly. You guys can get involved and fight about, which by the way, did you guys know that Trump was an FBI informant for, to, to solve uh, child pedo rings? Have you guys ever heard that? Look that up. Look that up. Look it up. Tr I just looked it up yesterday. Trump was actually an FBI informant for child pedo rings. Because when I saw the pictures with him and Epstein, I was like, there's something wrong here. And then I found out he was an informant for the FBI since the 80s to try to break down child pedo rings. I didn't know that. Did you know that? How many people knew that Trump worked for the FBI? How many people knew that Trump worked for an FBI as an informant? Did you know that? Did you know that Trump worked as an FBI informant to break up child pedophile rings and that he broke up a pedophile ring in New Jersey in the 80s? You can find this online. I did not know that. When I saw all the pictures with him and Epstein, I was disgusted because I thought that him and Billy Bob over here, I thought that him, good old Billy, he's gonna talk with a real nice accent, act real nice, but then he's gonna put the 94 crime bill in place that's gonna lock millions of people in a dungeon. Good old Billy, tons of pictures with Jeffrey Epstein. I saw him with pictures of Jeffrey Epstein. I saw Trump with pictures of Jeffrey Epstein. So I was like, man, Trump, he must be a pedophile too. I looked it up. Trump worked for the FBI as an informant to solve child pedophile rings. Did you know that? If you didn't know that, now you know. Now you know. You guys do me a favor, go over to deletelaws.com, pick up my poster. It's right here. You're looking at it. Obviously, I made it for kids. I did not put a key on there. That means you have to look up each and every one of these faces. I did not put a key on there. Stop making up info. Well, did you look it up, Luna? Did you look it up? Okay. Did you look it up? Did you look it up, Luna? You said stop making up information. L did you look it up, Luna? Did you look it up? 
Luna, did you look up the information that I'm saying to you? I don't think that you did, Luna. I don't think that you did. I'll bet you didn't look it up. Do you think that maybe I've done a little bit more research than a lot of people? I mean, do you think maybe I have? I'm just saying. Do you think that maybe I've done a lot of research? I'm just saying. You know, I did design this graphic myself. You know, I made this myself. I'm just saying I've done some research. That's all. That's all. I can break down the 94 crime bill in extraordinary detail. Can you, Luna? Can you break it down for us? If you Go ahead, Luna. Tell everybody about the 94 crime bill. How does it directly tie to the Mullen Commission? How, how, how does that happen? How does the Mullen Commission tie to the 94 crime bill? What are the associations between the 94 Mullen Commission and the crime bill? What is it, anybody? Anybody? Luna? Anybody? What's the association? All right. All right then. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm telling you, I looked it up. The FBI document is still online, Luna. The FBI document is still online. I read it myself yesterday. I read it myself. All right. I'm just trying to teach the real history, not bullshit. And I don't care what it is. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Anybody ever see that? That movie with the Tom Cruise and Jack Nicholson? You guys go by my website, deletelaws.com. That $99 poster is indestructible. We send it to you. We ship it to you. The $99 poster is indestructible on Delete Laws. The laminated poster is too, but I love the indestructible poster. It is unbelievable. It is, unbe it is such amazing paper, and it comes from Image Square Printing in Santa Monica, California. Okay, and if you can't get it, send me, go, you're probably going to the wrong website. You got to go to delete laws with a Z, delete laws with a Z. And Luna, you're welcome to send me a DM. You notice I did not, I did not kick you out of the room. The moderators did not kick you out of the room. You're more than welcome to disagree with me. You're more than welcome to, and we can have a discussion back and forth. We can have a discussion back. This is my cup of coffee fund, guys. I get by by teaching law on, on TikTok here. That's what I do for a living. That's what I do for a living. So if you're so inclined to buy me a cup of coffee, take a screenshot if you would please. Take a screenshot. I do appreciate your support and I need your support. In the, pretty soon this account will be suspended. In the middle of this talk, my account will be suspended. You'll see it happen. It's crazy. It happens every day. That's why I don't come on for days at a time because my account is suspended. Oh yeah, the 94, you are, yes, yes. Yes, beautiful girl, yes. Yes, beautiful girl. Yes, you are exactly correct. It, uh, it's, a uh, mean more? Yes. Yes. I don't know if that's your picture or not, but you are one beautiful woman. That is exactly correct. So what did the 94 crime bill specifically do? Since I touched on it, I want to make sure that I come in and I teach a little bit about it. So the 94 crime bill, not only did it create sentence enhancements, but it also created the cops program, community oriented policing services. And so if there's a, if there's a, a, a cop shop in your town, whether that be a, a state cop shop or a city cop or a borough cop or a district cop or a precinct cop, whatever, whatever, uh, what do they call them in New Jersey? the different uh, precincts, municipalities, that's what they call them, right? Beautiful, beautiful girl, I just followed you. So, so now the COPS program, what that does, Community Oriented Policing Services, what it does is it allows police to just apply to the COPS program through the Judge Advocate General Fund, and then they'll mint new COPS in your town. So if your budget was set aside for a new playground, a new community center, if your budget was set aside to take care of a senior citizen home, and as you know, the seniors are all gonna get old, all the boomers, then the COPS program, the federal government will pay for COPS for the first couple of years, but then after that, that's up to you to pay for it. Your city, your state, your town. And so you have this budget set to the side, and then what happens is what? Now your city, state, and town is forced to pay for those new COPS. So now you got a half a dozen state troopers you gotta pay for that was not in your state budget. But now it is, and what does that include? Pension, health insurance, insurance on the job, the, the uniform, the car, everything. So the COPS program has given away $24 billion. $24 billion has been spent on COPS. Has there been $24 billion spent on your community center? On your learning center? Anybody get a free education? Anybody go to, go to, go to college for free? Okay. Uh, anybody else in here go, go to college for free? The three strikes rule, thank you, I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. So now here's what happens. Here's how these two connect, I mentioned it earlier. So the Mullen Commission comes out, which by the way, if you guys have not seen my Mullen Commission lecture, Man, oh, it is fire. It's on Delete Laws YouTube page. Delete Laws with a Z on my YouTube page. I gave a live lecture on the Mullen Commission the other day. Probably one of the best lectures I've ever given. Probably one of the best lectures I've ever given. And that was on, uh, that's on my YouTube page on Delete Laws uh, YouTube page. It's also my website. It's also my, my, uh, my Instagram. And so right here, what happens is, 
is the Mullen Commission comes out in July of 1994 and it gives police, notice I have William, William Bratton and Chief of Police Michael Moore. This is the tyrant who no-knock raided me in 2002. This is the tyrant who no-knock raided me in 2000. This man right here, he did. This man no-knock raided my house when he was a detective in 2002. I really can't stand him. I, re I mean, he no-knock raided my house. I'm not, I wasn't a threat. I didn't have any drugs. I didn't have any guns. He no-knock raided me, piece of shit. So the Mullen Commission comes out in 94, in July of 94, and it says the cops are horrible, that the policing is horrible. It says the, 90, the 72 NAP Commission, nothing's gotten better, it's gotten worse. The, it, it, specifically, it says that the anti-corruption units have become corrupted themselves. Internal affairs investigation is more corrupt than ever before. So the 94 Mullen Commission comes out, the 94 Crime Bill then funds an ad agency to create a term called Back the Blue. Back the Blue. <laughs> Oh man. Oh, Sam, let it go, dude. Sam, let it go, brother. Let it go. Sam, Sammy, I'm not sure what your name is. I'm not trying to be mean. Let it go, dude. Let it go, dude. Let it go. You know, the other day when someone made, when someone made, a, made fun of, a, of a, a Jenna Ryan and they called her Ku Klux Karen, I said she was not a racist. She, she thought the election was stolen. That doesn't mean she's a racist. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh man. Here comes my ban. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm really sorry to hear that. I hope not. I really hope not. Lots of blank faces are in the room, so you could be right, brother. You guys, before they kick me off, go to deletelaws.com and get one of my three posters. Get my ebook if you could show a little support. Uh, I, I dropped that poster down to 99 bucks and it's supposed to be 140. I dropped the other poster down to 135. It's supposed to be 155. Just because I, I'm only making 20 bucks on each. Man of justice! I just did his podcast last night. We had a great time. Was it last night we did the podcast? Night before last, Man of Justice. You guys, Man of Justice is in the room. You see him right here? Man of Justice. This man spits knowledge. This man, Man of Justice 007, he spits some knowledge. I'm sure, man, they're all over me. You have no idea. I'm surprised I've been able to be on this long. I really am. I'm really shocked that I've been able to be on this long. I didn't, I didn't think I'd last this long. Typically, my account is suspended. If you guys don't see me on, I also have History of Laws USA. Chile de Castro is my main. My Chile de Castro is suspended until Friday or Saturday. Man of Justice 007, that man spits some knowledge. And we don't agree on everything. But you know what? He has the knowledge to disagree with me. He has the knowledge to disagree with me. I appreciate you so much, man of justice. I appreciate you so much. I think that you are a real, true patriot. He goes on and he just sits there and spits facts. He just sits there and spits out facts. That's what he does. And so I got a lot of respect for you. A lot of respect for you, okay? You guys see the audit I did last night at the border? Oh man, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And by the way, you know, I didn't plan on doing that audit. I did not plan on doing that audit. But by the way, um, I want to keep going on that Mullen Commission. You can go to deletelaws.com. I don't sell the Mullen Commission. I give it for free. It's not mine to sell, all right? I, and by the way, if you guys don't have the 20 bucks for the digital poster, I give it away for free. Man of Justice, did you not get a free digital poster from me? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Anybody who doesn't have the 20 bucks, I give it for free. I give the poster for free. I got it up here for 20, but if you don't got it, it's just a digital poster. I'll, I'll give it to you for nothing. If you want to learn history and you don't got the 20 bucks, it's yours. Don't worry about it, all right? Obviously, I can't give away the $99 one and the $135 one because there's a hard cost. Yeah, they took down uh, one of my accounts. It's been, a real, it's been a real shame. As you saw earlier, someone come in here earlier and called me a racist for no reason. I haven't done anything wrong. I'm just teaching the history of institutional racism. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. So now, uh, I want to tie these together for you guys just real quick. Let me get a sip of water because my mouth is dry. Ah, thank you for your patience. I appreciate that. And so now as we go down, yeah, as we go down, as we go down the line here. So I was talking earlier and I was saying that, that the Mullen Commission, so the Mullen Commission piggybacks off of the Knapp Commission of 1972. And if you don't know about these two commissions, just send me a direct mail, send me an email. And I will, I, I would love to, I would love to send you guys that. I would love to send you guys that. Uh, Brandy, I mean, do you want to learn some law? Because you know, you sound like you're lost in the duopoly, which is pretty sad because the duopoly hasn't served any of us good. You know, voting for Democrat or Republican, Democrat or Republican. So which, which, which one of the Democrats or Republican fought against this incarceration nation? Which one was it? Was it a Democrat or Republican who was against the incarceration nation? And people are like, oh man, you liked Trump. I did like Trump for a minute because he passed the First Step Act. 
And the First Step Act let 6,000 people out of prison with the stroke of a pen. The only president in U.S. history to do that. I would not vote for Trump because of, because of the, the leadership that he showed. I wouldn't vote for him now. I would vote for Tulsi Gabbard. That's who I want to vote for president. So I'm just telling you my particular... Listen to the man of justice, 007. We totally agree. The duopoly is the problem. You keep on voting Democrat or Republican, and how's our country going? How are things, folks? How are things? Did you guys know the 2001 case of Atwater versus City of Lago Vista says that you can be arrested for even a, not wearing your seatbelt? The 2013 case of Florida versus Harris said that if a dog barks, that is probable cause against you. Wren versus the United States says that the cops see your car. They can stop your car based on suspicion of your car. Did you know that? Gonzalez versus Castle Rock says that the police have no obligation to protect you. Arizona versus Johnson says that if you're the passenger in the car, you can be jerked out of the car, just like if you're the driver and detained. And what does detainment mean? In handcuffs, on the ground, on your belly, on your knees. On your, did Obama stop that? When, 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 when Professor Gates was arrested in his own house, the Harvard professor, did Obama say, oh, <clears throat> oh my God, we should talk about Terry versus Ohio? Did Obama do that? No, he didn't. He had beer gate. And just so you know, Professor Gates, who was Terry stopped in his own home, that was a Terry stop. They had him in handcuffs on the floor in his own house. There was pictures of him on the wall. It was like the Saturday night, uh, the Saturday night live special. Poor little crack on him. Poor little crack on him. Did Obama say we should overturn Terry versus Ohio? Did Bill Clinton? Did Joe Biden? Did Ronald Reagan? Did, I didn't put the Bushes on here because I can't stand looking at them. I hate them both so much. Didn't George Bush, George W. Bush, go to a ranch called N. Er ranch? N with the hard E-R. George W. Bush, who I could not put on here because I couldn't look at his mug. I can't stand him, right? He went to a ranch called N. Er ranch. Fill in the blanks. That's where George Bush went to a ranch. Did you know that? Where are you guys watching from today? Where are you guys watching from? Type in right down here. Type down right in here where you guys are watching from. Type down right in here where you're watching from. I need to know, are there any Americans in here? Is anybody here support the United States of America? Huh? Do you? Are you about this country? Are you about freedom? Are you about liberty? Do you believe in the freedoms and liberty that are guaranteed in the Bill of Rights? PA in the house, Texas in the house, Michigan in the house. God bless you, Tucson. I am just outside of Tucson. I'm heading into Vegas for Thanksgiving with my family. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. West Virginia's in the house. West, thank you so much for the support. What I really want you guys to do is pick up my poster on DeleteLaws.com and show this to kids. I did not put a key code for the, he for the icons because I want you guys to teach who the icons are. And if you don't know who they are, then you send me an email and say, Chili, who are these two, two women right here? That's Susan B. Anthony and that's Elizabeth Cady Stanton. And who is this right here? Who is this? And who is this? And who's this? And who's this? Who's Lewis Adams? What did W.E.B. Du Bois do? What did William Lloyd Garrison do? And who's this guy, Isaac Hopper, and why is he important? How come Isaac Hopper is on here and why is he so important? Why is he so important? What is Giles versus Teasley? What is Giles versus Harris? What do these things mean? Why is the standard oil breakup so important? What does Carroll versus the United States do? I want you to have to answer the hard questions where you have to look it up yourself to teach the kids. It's about the children. You and I are too old to believe we can change this world. The kids aren't. The kids will see this and they'll be like, holy shit, this ha we have to... This guy's so brainwashed? Oh yeah? I'll, I'm not gonna kick you out of the room. What am I brainwashed about, brother? Ab, a, Al, Abdul Buzz with no picture? With no pictures and six followers? Yeah, dude, you're a troll for sure, dude. Sorry, man. Sorry, dude. There's other places you can go. There's other places you can enjoy your day. Go to DeleteLaws.com with a Z. Go to DeleteLaws with a Z. I'm not gonna have a troll in here. That guy can, he, can go, he can go pound sand. Go have a ham sandwich, brother. Go have a ham sandwich and enjoy your ham sandwich, okay? Pennsylvania versus Mims, man of justice, ask for that. I'll go to Pennsylvania versus Mims right now. DeleteLaws.com with the Z, pick up my poster or my ebook. This is my cup of coffee fund. I am so low, guys, because of the trolls. They get my account suspended. And this is my cup of coffee fund. Don't break yourself, take a screenshot. I'm talking about a cup of coffee here. I'm talking about a cup of coffee. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I'll do that. I hope you're a good guy. I hope you're a good guy. I hope you're a good person. Hope you're on my side. 
Hope you're on my side. I added you. I added you. So he, uh, Man of Justice asked if I would talk about Pennsylvania versus Mims. As a matter of fact, I am an expert in this specific case right here, Pennsylvania versus Mims. This is a 1977 holding. Just so you know, the Supreme Court does not rule. They make holdings on what is constitutional based on your Bill of Rights. They hold what is constitutional using the Supremacy Clause, and then what they say then becomes part of our Bill of Rights. It becomes part of the deal. Okay? Okay. There it is. There's the screenshot again for you, sir. There's the screenshot again for you. Take a screenshot if you would, please. That's where you get the digital posters. I got three versions, $20 version, $99 version, $135 version. I do appreciate your support. Buffering really bad today. Oh yeah, because I'm getting reported. I'm getting reported constantly for teaching history. I'm getting reported. Okay, you got a screenshot of that. That's all the same. So now right here in, T in Terry versus Ohio, what this does is it washes away your Fourth Amendment right. And it says, we're right down here where I said earlier, no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation. You see that right there? It says, no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause supported. So this means there has to be a warrant if you break the law and someone swears that you're, you've hurt them. Okay? So then right here in Terry v. Ohio, that changes to officer safety being more important than your civil liberties. And so when officer safety becomes the most paramount thing, and why do they do that? So that they can grab black folks. Now, I don't want that to be true. Don't call me a white savior. I created this for me. The cops no not created me. I was pissed off. And I found out that the laws were created for people of color. I happen to be Colombian. Mi amo Jose Maria, pero mi amigo se llama mi señor Chile, right? My, my, my name is Jose, but my friends call me Chili Taco. That's why my name is Chili. And so Terry V. Ohio puts officer safety over your rights. That's why it's, the equation looks like that. So you show the kids, officer safety goes over your rights. That's why I made it like this. You show the children. Officer safety goes over your rights, which is wrong. That's why we have a Bill of Rights. So in 1977, 1970, 76, oh, I can't remember now. But in 1976, I believe Harry Mims is pulled over. He's a black man. All, the, all these cases here are passed mostly against black people, just so you know. It's disgusting. So Pennsylvania versus Mims. Now, he doesn't want to get out of the car because he goes, look, I, you know, just give me the ticket, right? He's got a gun on him because you know why? He doesn't want to get, he doesn't want to get killed. Because you got to carry a gun back then, or you got to carry a gun now. We should all be carrying guns. Everybody should carry a gun. The world would be a better place. And so in 1977, the Supreme Court holds, because Harry Mims was in the car, that you have to get out of the car in the name of officer safety. Is it safe for you when you get out of the car? Is it safe for you? How, how does it go for you if you get out of the car in front of the cops? How does that go? How does that go? So just so you know, if you get pulled over for not wearing your seatbelt, for, for speeding, for making a, a wide turn, or if your taillight doesn't work all of a sudden, or your license plate light doesn't work, you have to get out of the car. If the cop orders you out of the car, you have to get out. It's a Supreme Court holding. You cannot stay in the car. So I see people get pulled over by the cops and they're sitting in the car and they're like, I'm not getting out, I haven't done anything wrong. You have to. Not that I enjoy telling you this. I don't agree with this. This is wrong. But I don't want to see you get beat up or tased or shot or killed. Your job is to survive the stop. Survive the stop so that we can fight to overturn Terry together. Okay? We want to live because life is precious, my friend. I want to live, dude. I want to change Terry. I've often said that if the Terry movement gets going, they're gummy. Okay? They'll, they'll take care of me. I'll leave this country. I don't want to die. I don't want to be a martyr, okay? I don't want to be a martyr. I want to live. So then the seven, now officer safety being paramount over your rights, that's going to extend into Pennsylvania versus Mims where you're the driver, the driver of the car. You got to get out. That then goes into Arizona versus Johnson of 2009. That you have to get out of the car if you're the passenger in a car. In the name of what? In the name of officer safety. Forget your right to be free in your person, houses, papers, and effects. Forget that. Ruth Bader Ginsburg write that opinion. Ruth Bader Ginsburg writes in the opinion, which is in the ebook. She says, in a long-standing case called Terry versus Ohio, we've already determined that if you're the driver of the car, that you have to get out of the car in the name of officer safety. The driver's got to get out. So then, of course, the passengers have to get out of the car. And what does that mean? That means detainment. And what does detainment mean? You go to a dungeon, baby. Look at Micah Johnson. Look at the video I posted of Micah Johnson. You go to the dungeon. You head to the dungeon. That's where you go. 
Because if I get out of the car in the name of officer safety, I'm not going to be happy. I'm going to tell them to have a ham sandwich. I'm going to tell them, you go have a ham sandwich, bruh. And then what happens to me? I get put in handcuffs and I get detained. And the cop puts you in handcuffs. And then after that, what does he say? Hey, I'm going to let you go and everything's fine. No, bro. After you put me in handcuffs for two seconds, or you get on top of me and stick your knees in my back, there's no good day for me, sir. There's no good day for me. And so when Obama has beer gate with Professor Gates, does, he was the president of the Harvard Law Review. He's legitimately smart. I'm a dumb jock who learned all this stuff after I was no-knock rated. I'm not that bright. Everybody in this room is as bright as me, okay? Everybody in this room is as smart as me. I'm no smarter than anybody else. I guarantee it. I guarantee it, okay? And so, okay, so the, the, the way we t stop traffic stops, just so you guys know, and very few people actually ask this, so that's gonna be the 1913 case of Hendrick versus Maryland. This is how we stop traffic stops. I don't talk about it very often because no one really asks about it, but the 1913 case of Hendrick versus Maryland is what the federal government allowed the states to create traffic laws in their towns. It's called Hendrick versus Maryland. Have you guys ever heard about that? Oh, you, have, you, have you guys ever heard about that? Anybody ever heard about that? The 1913 case, I challenge you guys to look this up and come back here and educate me. Educate me, I'm ready to learn from you. I only know so much shit, I'm not smart. I just spent years researching this. Look up this case, the 1913, and by the way, you can look up all the cases on Oyez, O-Y-E-Z.org, or you can look it up on Justia.com, Justia. J-U-S-T-I-A dot O-R-G, okay? This is what creates traffic laws in America right there. That's the case. The only reason you should ever be pulled over in your car is if you are a reckless driver and you are a danger to others. Otherwise, you shouldn't be pulled over ever. Never, not once ever, okay? Thank you. It's called the Uniform Commercial Code. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for chiming in on that. The Uniform Commercial Code. You guys look that up. Uniform Commercial Code. If you guys learn anything at all from me today, then pick up my digital poster. It's only 20 bucks. If you don't have the 20 bucks, it's yours for free. I'll give it to you for nothing. But you gotta go through my website, send me an email, say I don't got 20 bucks, bro. And boom, it's yours. This is my cup of coffee fund. If you guys learned anything, take a screenshot. Please pick me up a cup of coffee. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you for helping me out. Justia, J-U-S-T-I-A dot org. That's exactly correct. That's exactly correct, you beautiful babe. And then over here, this is my cash app. This is my cup of coffee fund. Please pick me up a cup of coffee. That can be as small as a, a $2 cup of coffee or you can buy me a super vanilla latte java with three extra scoops of, uh, uh, of, of the shots of the uh, espresso in there. Ooh, I love the shots of espresso. I love the shots of espresso. And this is my cup of coffee fund right there. Don't break yourself, okay? God bless you, do not break yourself. Do not break yourself for me. I really don't want you to do that. Some guy came in my, my YouTube live last night. He said, I don't make any money, but I'm gonna buy your poster. And I said, no, you're not, brother. No, you're not. He said, I'm living on a fixed income. I said, then I don't want your money. I'll send it to you for free. I sent it to him for free. <laughs> because you know why? It's about us, baby. It's about us. It's about us overturning Terry. And now let's pop, let's pop back into Pennsylvania versus Mims a little bit. Because Pennsylvania, so let me just show you, and let's go to the big poster here. Here's the laws that spur off of Terry. So just so you know, all cases, all cases, every single case on this wall right here, every single case is based on what's called stare decis. Stare decis is determined all the way back here in the Federalist Papers, all the way back here. And the Federalist Papers are gonna be written back and forth between 17, 1776, the Constitution is, 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 is uh, written out, but we, we have the Federalist Papers going all the way from like 1762, 1763 to 1776. If you have not read the Federalist Papers, they are available on YouTube. You can listen to them for free. You can listen to them. Uh, the name of my book is called, uh, Delete, is called Legally Departed and you can get it on deletelaws.com. The name of my book is called Legally Departed and you can get it on deletelaws dot com with a z make sure you put a z on there okay I, I didn't know if you're talking to me so maybe you're talking to someone else so now right here so now starry decise so all of these cases are based on cases that previously predated it 
that previously, pre so just so you know, to answer the question, the reason why Isaac Hopper is, is on the graphic, and I'm sorry, I didn't get Harry on the, on the poster uh, for kids, but she's on the next one. This is iteration one. This, I had iteration two coming out, but then cancel culture hammered me. So I had a second version coming out, but I just got hammered with cancel culture. So I'm sorry. But the next version of the poster has uh, Harriet Tubman on it, and it's got a bunch of people. Uh, you got John Jay on the next poster coming out. John Jay, who wrote Federalist number three, real piece of garbage. Real piece of garbage. And this is John Marshall, if you guys didn't know who John Marshall was, in the famous case of Marsh. And by the way, if you really want to get a true lecture on Marbury versus Madison, I recommend you go to Jeffrey Kaplan's YouTube page. Jeffrey Kaplan is a college professor. Obviously, I listen to hundreds of lectures, hundreds of lectures. From on Yale College, on Harvard, I listen to anybody who will teach the law, I will listen to that lecture. And if you guys send me any information on YouTube links, I will listen to any. So Jeffrey Kaplan gives the best breakdown, the best breakdown of Marbury versus Madison. And, and, and just so you know, Marbury versus Madison concerned this guy, John Marshall. He's a real piece of work. I'm, I, I try to keep it clean. So now when we talk about stare decisis, we talked about Pennsylvania versus MIMS, how you got to get out of the car for officer safety. Well, what's that about? What's that about? We got to get out of the car for officer safety because the circumstances are exigent from the 1925 case of Carroll versus the United States. Carroll versus the United States said that if, you're, if, if there's going to be a loss of life, if the cops are in hot pursuit of you, or they need to seize evidence off of you, and this is based off the mandate of 1920 to 1933, that they can automobile exclusion car your rule, which means that they can warrantlessly search your car and get you out of the car because they're afraid that they could lose their life. Because it's dangerous for them, not you though. Not that you're going to be abused, beaten, and taken to a dungeon. Nah, those things. And who decides if the cops are in hot pursuit? They do. They do. So the Carroll case extends into Terry versus Ohio. Did you know that? Now, it also goes into Kerr versus California and Brinegar versus the United States. But I wanted to do a direct correlation here so you guys could see that Carroll versus the United States, which is based on a mandate, based on prohibition, okay? Based on prohibition. This case right here creates the automobile exclusionary rule and the exigent circumstances clause. And so what's going on in 1963? The circumstances are exigent. Martin McFadden sees John Terry and says, oh my God, he poses a loss for life because he's hanging around downtown Cleveland in 63. And as you know, from 1954 until 1963, there's a no man's land going on in America. Cops don't know their place. Black people don't know their place. White people don't know their place. But we do know this, the black codes are being enforced all the way up until 64. Black codes meaning that you're not allowed to hang around in town unless you're with your owner. I swear to God, those are the black codes. I'm not making shit up. So now from 1954 to 1964, who's going to enforce desegregation? The police, right? Nope. The National Guard, because they refuse to do it, the cops. So he's been a cop since 1925. What's going on in 1925? Lynchings. And cops are enforcing those lynchings and doing the lynchings. I'm sorry to say that, but it's true. Okay? Okay? And so then what happens is he says, he looks at him and says, I didn't like how he looked. Yeah, because John Terry was mentally ill. He spent the rest of his life in a crazy institute. Insane asylum. Forgive me. I'm not trying to be mean to, to people who are, are... Okay. So now the reason he has a funny look on his face is because he's, he's insane. He's an insane person. And so now right here, he goes up and grabs him based on the edges and search against his clause that he says he poses a loss of life. Did you know that? Did you know that? Okay. Did you know that? I bet you didn't know that. And so now right here, this is the stare decisis. Carol creates the edges and circumstances clause that then the Supreme Court will invoke in Terry versus Ohio. And then it's again invoked in Pennsylvania versus Mims. And so then all of these cases here extend from Terry versus Ohio. All of them. Every one of them. That strips our freedom. Ooh, it just pisses me off. It just makes me so upset. It really does. Every time I give this lecture, it just pisses me off. Okay? So, so now let's go into the details. Let's go into the details of each one of these cases. It's only a matter of minutes before my account gets suspended. I can just feel it coming. I can just feel it coming. So if you guys are so inclined, go buy these different applications here. I'm going to try to get this out as quickly as I can. This, this, this is where you can get my poster. Get my poster on Delete Laws. I got a $99 version. I got a $20 version. And I got a $135 version. Get my poster on DeleteLaws.com with a Z. Please pick it up for the kids and teach the kids what I'm teaching you now. If you don't know how to teach them, then you set them down in front of my YouTube channel. As you have noticed, I have cut all bad language. Have you noticed that? Not one curse word. I don't curse anymore 
because on YouTube, a lot of parents told me they're sitting down their kids and showing them my lectures. And so I don't, I don't curse anymore. I, no more, I don't curse anymore. As mad as I get when I teach these classes, I do not, I do not curse anymore because I want parents to be able to teach this to their children. So I want to be able to show it to kids. This is my cup of coffee fund. This is my cup of coffee fund. Take a screenshot, take a screenshot. And this is my cup of coffee fund. I always have to be fundraising because if I'm not on here, you know what will happen? It's because I'm suspended. If you don't hear from me, it's because I'm suspended. That's why. If you don't hear from me every morning, it's because my account has been suspended. So now right here, Terry versus Ohio. So we know that Carol creates the edges and circumstances clause that creates the starry decides to create Terry versus Ohio. And so then Terry versus Ohio is going to spurn into Graham versus Connor. They mentioned Graham versus, they mentioned Terry versus Ohio over and over and over in the oral arguments of Graham versus Connor. If you want to puke, listen to the oral arguments on oyes.org of Graham versus Connor. The reasonable officer on the scene will determine the reasonable amount of force to use on you. So the cop on the scene, based on his safety, is going to decide how much force to be used on you. And that's why we have all these people have been legally departed. Right there. That's the reason why. That's the reason why. That's the reason why right there. That's the reason why. That's the reason why. And so Terry versus Ohio then spurns into Graham versus Connor, which creates the use of force policy for every single police across the nation. Every single cop across the nation. Graham versus Connor is the use of force policy. Okay? Graham versus Connor is the use of force policy. Do you understand that? You guys drop down, the room turned over. Drop down here where you guys are watching from. Drop down right in here where you guys are watching from. And by the way, you guys are talking about a book. Someone DM me. Someone DM me. I want to know what book you're talking about and I want to get the same book. Okay? You guys, someone DM me about that book you guys are talking about. Drop down here where you guys are watching from so I know where everybody is. Drop down right here. Thank you, Electric. I, I, I added you as a friend. I, I, I'm always nervous about adding new people because I have so many trolls. But thanks a lot for helping me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I super appreciate it. So now the starry decisive is going to create a Pennsylvania versus Memphis. But here's some things that you, I, haven't, I don't talk about a lot. But the Cortez versus... So last night, as you guys saw, I was stopped at the border. Did you guys see that last night? I was stopped, not at the border, 50 miles inside... 30, I don't know how long it was. It was at least 20 or 30 miles inside of the border. I was stopped at the border last night and I, did, and I pulled my camera out and I asked the guy, I said, are you American? Are you American? Okay. Of course, of course, of course. It's TikTok. TikTok is not my friend. They do not, they have a, they have a mole inside of TikTok that does all my moderation that keeps all of my videos suspended and suppresses my account. I wish that wasn't true. Okay. I wish that wasn't true. Yeah. I don't put up with that crap. So the, the 1981 case is based on the border thing I did last night. 81 case. Remember Terry v. Ohio changes the fourth amendment standard from no warrant shall issue, but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation, right? It changes it to reasonable suspicion here. And so reasonable suspicion in the Cortez case of 1981, they say, oh, you know what? You can just take the totalitary circumstances of the scene to create reasonable suspicion. Now cops are creating reasonable suspicion. And one time I watched this James Freeman audit. If you guys have not seen James Freeman, he's the best auditor in the country. He is the best auditor in the country, a guy named James Freeman. He is the number one auditor, as far as I'm concerned, besides maybe Disorderly Product, Disorderly Product News. Disorderly Product News and James Freeman, those two guys, their audits are just vicious. You think my audits are vicious? James Freeman's audits are vicious. And so now right here in Terry versus Ohio, it, it, what they say here, James Freeman's doing an audit. He's outside of a prison or he just breaks down in his car and the cop walks up and says, you two white guys in a, in a red Mustang outside of a prison. They take the totalitary circumstances of the scene, of the scene. Uh, is that for me, Jimmy Love123? Are you talking about me, Jimmy? Uh, uh, Jim, Jim Love123, so far I've got Vulture and POS and POS. I don't know. Jimmy, is that for me, brother? Is that for me? I don't know, man. I, I, I mean, lots of stuff here, man. Lots of stuff, Jimmy. Take, take a hike, brother. You know what I'm saying? I don't need it, dude. I'm trying to teach law here, dude. I'm trying to teach law, my friend. I'm trying to teach law. 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 There you go. There you go, you beautiful babe. Handle them. There you go. So now, right here, now, now in Cortez versus the United States, right here, they, take, they can now take the totalitary circumstances of the scene 
to create reasonable suspicion. That's literally what's going on in this country. Cops can create reasonable suspicion. And what happens with reasonable suspicion, if you listen to the Overturn Terry part one, two, and three on delete laws, you will hear that the Supreme Court Justice Earl Warren creates that reasonable suspicion is whatever the cop says it is. And he changes the meaning of the word arrested to detained. And what does detainment mean? You go in shackles, you go in a dungeon, you get arrested for no reason, for no reason, okay? That's what happens. Earl Warren in Terry versus Ohio creates this, 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 this magical land called detainment. With who? Who does he do it with? And I, and let, I don't talk about him very much because he, he literally was a member of the KKK. Right here, Hugo Black. Have you guys ever Googled Hugo Black? Does anybody know how to fix Wikipedia? Because this tyrant, this, this KKK member, he never changed his stripes. He never changed his stripes. Listen to the Overturn Terry. Listen to the Overturn Terry part one, two, and three on my YouTube page. Listen to what he says. And on his Wikipedia page, it says that he changed and he became a huge civil rights advocate. He was a member of the KKK. This is not a lie. It is well documented. Okay? You need to go to his Wikipedia page and change it. I don't know how to do it, but somebody has to help. He is full of crap, okay? What does he say in the Terry v. Ohio org arguments? He says, well, what if he wants to do something less than arrest him? And that's what we have today. That's what we have in America today. Something less means on your knees, on your belly, going handcuffs, and you go into the dungeon in the back of my car, okay? This guy was the worst person I've ever read when you listen to the oral arguments on Terry v. Ohio, which are on my YouTube page, go to Overturn Terry. You guys take a screenshot of this, okay? Take a screenshot. This is the name of my YouTube page and watch part one, two, and three. They're only 10 minutes each of Overturn Terry, okay? This guy's teaching from his knees. Oh man, oh man, I don't understand those kinds of things, brother. I don't understand it, dude. I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to help out here. Just trying, okay. Uh, you know, Oregon lawyer, it's always the lawyers, do you know that? It's always the lawyers who come in here, bro. I'll have you come on, bro. I'll add you into the live. You wanna have a debate? I don't think you do. I don't think you do. Most of you guys don't. L the lawyers always come in and they think they know some stuff and they simply don't. Go to Delete Laws YouTube page. It's Delete Laws with a Z. And that's the YouTube page, okay? Delete laws with the Z. Go to the, go to the delete laws with the Z, and you guys can you guys can look that up and watch the oral arguments of Terry versus Ohio, part one, two, and three of Overturn Terry. It's called Overturn Terry, and you will see, you will hear, you will hear that the, that Hugo Black, this KKK member, he's literally a member of the KKK. So let me give you a little backlog. Just let me, let me teach you about Hugo because I got stuck on him and he pissed me off and I started reading about him. Hugo Black is born, forgive me, Hugo Black is born in 1886, right here. This is the year that Hugo Black is born. And so you say he's born where? He's born in Clay County, Alabama in 1886. Any person on here, I can give a long lecture on. Any person on this wall. So if you wanna know anything at all whatsoever, I can teach you great detail about every person on this wall. Hugo Black is born in 1886. So let's check it out. He's born in Clay County, Alabama in 1886. So let's take a look at what's going on in 1886. In 1886, you have 64 white people being lynched and 74 black people being lynched in 1886. Okay, then as you move forward, Hugo Black lives in Clay County, Alabama from 1886, 18, these are the lynching numbers according to the NAACP. As we keep going down to 1896, by 1896, we have 113 lynchings in 1895, 78 black people lynched, 66 white people lynched, 48 white, white people lynched. Hugo Black is attending lynchings. He's going to the lynchings. Do you understand that? How many people are, are executed in Alabama? 16 people are lynched in Clay County, Alabama. And Hugo Black is watching all of this happen. You think that doesn't influence him? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. You bet your ass it does, 100%. And so now let's keep moving forward. So now right here, we move forward 1897. Let's go all the way up to 1906, boom. So we still have, now Hugo Black is 20 years old. 
in 1906. He's 20 years old. Thank you, Brandon, for getting me on track. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate you. Just tell me to get it on track. I got OCD. So eight, in, in, in 1906, Hugo, you guys tell me where you guys are watching from. Type down in there where you're watching from. Let's clear the air. I'm sorry I got heated there for a minute. I, I don't like trolls. So clear the air. Just type down here where you guys are watching from. That'll help me so I can focus on the people in the room, people in the room who want to learn history. So now 1906, Hugo Black has seen, there's been, there's been how many people have been lynched in America? How many people have been lynched in America from the time Hugo Black is born in 1886? And this is on your graphics so you can teach the kids. And so right here, 1886, all the way until 1906, we're, we're, looking, at, we're looking at 2,000 people? 2,000 human beings have been lynched? You think this doesn't affect his brain? He joins the KKK. He joins the KKK. You think I'm kidding? I'm not. It's well documented through history. And so now as we move forward right here, born in 1896, and then he becomes the, 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 uh, he becomes the senator of Alabama in 1926. And then he's appointed to the Supreme Court up here in 1936. So what are his ideologies? What has he learned through life? What has he learned? This is all on my YouTube. I teach, I put everything on YouTube. I'll put this on YouTube. Okay, what has Hugo Black learned? He's learned the Jim Crow way, that, that black people are feeble-minded, that they can't possibly function in society. That's what he learns. The Jim Crow Act affects the Supreme Court justice personnel because there's no TV. The only act are what the entertainers do. And what are the entertainers doing in the white world? They're putting on blackface and acting like a feeble-minded slave. And when does TV come out? We don't have a TV going on until the, the theater going on until the early 1900s. There's no television. So the only acts being done, and this is why people hate blackface so much, the only acts that are being done are acts that people put on and they don't have black performers. They have people who paint their face black and act like a feeble-minded slave. That is exactly what the justices are seeing. All these guys, and when do they see this? all the way up until the Taft Court. So William Howard Taft, what kind of entertainment does he take in? He takes in blackface entertainment. That's why people hate blackface so much. Because they didn't hire black actors, they just had white guys paint their face black. That's a fact. It pisses me off beyond belief. So William Howard Taft in 1920 and 1931, what is, you know, when he comes onto the Supreme Court, he is then the lead inquisitor, the lead questioner. He's the lead guy who asked the questions in the 1968 case of Terry versus Ohio. It just fires me up and it just pisses me off. It just pisses me off. And it should piss you off too. That we have a member of the KKK. Now, just so you know, a lot of these people on the Supreme Court here, a lot of these people on the Supreme Court are 100% a part of white supremacy. And that doesn't make me happy to say because as you can see, my skin color is light. I'm not proud of that. I just want to teach the unedited history of the United States, not some bullshit history. So please, you guys, make sure you go by my website, pick up my digital poster. It's only $20. If you don't have it, I'll give it to you for free. The $99 version is, a, uh, is, is indestructible paper, and the $135 version is laminated paper. Laminated. And it's on the best, highest quality paper that you can possibly get. The, the quietest quality paper. Yeah, and that's where Terry Frisk comes from. So now, just so you know, I'm talking about Hugo, and someone just said Terry Frisk. Let's talk about that for a moment. Let's talk about that for just a moment. Sound's still speeding over here. Let me grab some water. So now, when you talk about the Terry Frisk, Hugo Black is the guy who talks with Reuben Payne, who is the prosecutor for the state. And, and when you talk about the Terry Frisk, Reuben Payne and Hugo Black have a back and forth that I illustrate clearly on the Overturn Terry video. Overturn Terry, part one, two, and three. Overturn Terry, part one, two, and three on the Delete Laws YouTube page. Reuben Payne and Hugo Black have a back and forth about creating a new little segue of law called detainment. He is the guy who comes up with stop and frisk. This guy, it was actually coming up with a guy named uh, Bernard Friedman, a Cuyahoga County appeals court clerk. However, uh, uh, Hugo Black is a major part of that. 
And so when you get to the Terry v. Ohio case, they're talking about John Terry. And then he runs up and he grabs John Terry and that violates his Fourth Amendment right for what? To be secure in your person against unreasonable searches and seizures. Okay? Okay? When you say free in your person against unreasonable searches and seizures. And so when John Terry is standing on the side of the street and Martin McFadden runs up and grabs him, that violates his Fourth Amendment right. And so Hugo Black and Reuben Payne have a back and forth during the trial, during the oral arguments that I break down so well. And he says, well, I'm sure you can just grab a man and not necessarily arrest him. And he goes, yeah, if you don't arrest him to take him downtown, then you're not really arresting him. And, he's, and I'm sorry, he's got the Southern accent. I actually love Southern women, so, so please don't, don't hack me for it. I lived in Texas for a while. Uh, I love the Southern people. I'm not against Southerners. I'm just making fun of him because he is a piece of garbage. Was. And in his, in his Wikipedia page, they talk about how good of a person he was, how he changed his stripes. Okay, then explain to me why he says in the Terry case that, what do you mean he wants to do something less than arrest him? What do you mean something less than arrest him, Hugo? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that, Hugo? What do you mean by something less than arrest him? Well, we know what that is. Something less than arrest him is right here. There's all these folks right here. Philando Castile, they, they, he, did he have a Second Amendment right to carry a gun? Not at all. In the name of officer safety, he got blown away. He got blown away within 100 seconds. The jury acquitted the cop for murdering him within 15 minutes. Why is that? Because officer safety is more important than your civil liberties. The cop being safe is more important than your civil liberties. Okay? This is what I'm talking about. I mean, I, I try to just explain it in great detail so that you guys understand. And it's hard not to curse because I get mad, but the people who are watching YouTube now, I spend a lot of time doing YouTube lives. The people who are watching YouTubes are telling me they're putting their kids down in front of the TV, so I'm not gonna curse anymore. I'm not gonna say any more bad language. That's not gonna come out of me anymore. I refuse. So, so now when we talk about your civil liberties and Terry versus Ohio, and why do I go on and on and on about Terry versus Ohio? How come I do it? Why do I get so upset? Why do I get so ticked off? Because Terry v. Ohio puts officer safety, remember, what's the supremacy clause? What is the supremacy clause specifically? What's the supremacy clause mean? It means that anything that these guys say at the Supreme Court level is now supreme. Now, it also says that your Bill of Rights, nothing can go before it and nothing can go above it. But it also means that whatever the Supreme Court personnel say, is that it then becomes a part of this. So officer safety is now the number one. It's above your liberty. Do you, do you, have, do you have a right to, to assemble? No, they can arrest you for assembling. Do you have the right to speech? No, they can arrest you for telling them to go suck, a, to go, to go suck an egg. Do, do, they have, do, you, do you have the right to, to film them? How many auditors have been arrested? How many people, how many people, no, it's TikTok, they're messing with me, right? It is what it is. It's constant. My, my internet is 5G, the best internet you could possibly get. And so you say, you know, so all of your civil liberties, you don't have a right to self-protection. And we know that because Philando Castillo was killed within 100 seconds. Within 100 seconds, this man was shot for holding, for having a gun in his car. For having a gun in his car. That's where we are. So let me do this. Um, let me do this. Let me, let me jump off this live uh, just, just so that I can save the video. Let me jump off this live just so that I'm amazed I've been able to stay on this long. I really am. I'm amazed I've been able to stay on this long. I do appreciate you guys coming by. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm just going to, I don't want to jump off the live because at any moment the account can be suspended and then I might not get the video and I want to get the video and I want to post it because I want to make sure I can educate as many people as I possibly can. I want to teach as many people as I possibly can that Terry v. Ohio is the linchpin of death and it's killed our country. We take on Terry first and then we get Kerr and then we get Brinegar and then we get Carroll. And if you don't know what those are, get the digital poster and we can talk about it. If you can't afford the digital poster, I'll give it to you for free. I highly recommend you get the $99 version one. So you put it on your wall and you teach it to kids. And I have changed my language because of YouTube because the parents are telling me they're letting the kids watch the YouTube videos. So there'll be no more bad language coming out of me. That's why I say go have a ham sandwich. I used to say something else. <laughs> so before this, this account gets suspended, I'm just gonna save this. I'll come right back on in five minutes. I'm gonna eat some coffee, eat some coffee, drink some coffee and have some water. And let me just end this real quick. I'll be back on in five minutes on this channel. I'll be back on in five minutes on this channel. And thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'll see you guys soon, later.